Hi, I'm John, the bank fighter extraordinaire, and I'm talking about the case where the editor of the newspaper dubbed me bank fighter extraordinaire, the case of Mrs. Jean Metcalf, a severely allergic woman in Smith Falls, who was ordered evicted by the courts from her house umpteen times as she fought her way to the Supreme Court of Canada. The first person who was being foreclosed from a house who used what we call our Jesus defense, which is to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, the principle, the loan they printed and loaned you, and repudiate the interest like the slothful servant did in the Bible. Say you're stiffed for the interest, and she was someone who used my stiff the bank kit all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada. So more on her story. So on November the 23rd, we heard bank wins round one in Metcalf dispute. But on December the 21st, we read allergy woman foils eviction attempt. A Smith Falls woman who says she's confined to her home because she's allergic to the outside world won a court battle and staved off eviction Monday. The Bank of Montreal had applied to the Supreme Court of Ontario for a writ of possession for the home of Jean Metcalf, who has not made a mortgage payment in nine months. However, Mr. Justice D.D. McRae refused to grant the writ and sent the case back to Ontario Supreme Court in Perth, where a hearing will be heard before Judge John Mathis on January 18th. Metcalf says she's severely allergic to almost everything, including chemicals, synthetic materials, exhaust fumes, cigarette smoke, perfume, and cooking fumes. Metcalf told the court she needed more time to find another place to live and asked that the case be adjourned to a Perth courtroom so that it would be closer to home. Metcalf said after the hearing she's been looking for another place for 20 months. I need a place that has electric heating, no carpeting, and an apartment wouldn't really do because of the cooking fumes. I'll settle for a one-room shack right now. So then Metcalf and Bank continue court battles. After each loss, Tenacious Termel just looks ahead, daring to shake up establishment. Metcalf still at house. And then uh, December 21st, uh, allergic woman foils eviction attempt. And then Metcalf and Bank continue the court battles. Metcalf loses in court. Uh, You've signed my death warrant, Metcalf told Lanark County Judge John Matheson yesterday. Mrs. Metcalf, an Emily Street woman, has fought the bank of Montreal since August for possession of the house she occupies. Anyway, yeah, what the heck. Yesterday, Judge John Matheson in an Ontario Supreme Court hearing signed a writ of possession, allowing the bank to take control of the house she says is the only place she can live. Seated at a table at the front of the courtroom, sucking on an oxygen hose with a number of vials of clear liquid in front of her, Mrs. Metcalf broke down and cried during the hearing, claiming to suffer from an ecological illness known as total allergy syndrome. She has her house stripped of bare of any synthetic materials. She hasn't made a mortgage payment since April 1982. Tuesday afternoon after the court hearing, Lanark County Sheriff Ken Fournier served a notice on Mrs. Metcalf, ordering her to vacate the premises by January 31st, 2 p.m. Ottawa bank fighter John Termel has represented Mrs. Metcalf for the last two months, and he vowed to take the case to the highest court in the land. On Tuesday, Mr. Termel made an application to Judge Matheson to set aside a previous court judgment and made a counterclaim that the bank should reimburse Mrs. Metcalf for any interest she's already paid on her mortgage. Lawyer Paul Howard, acting for the bank, applied for and was granted a writ of possession for the house. Mrs. Metcalf says her sickness makes it impossible for her to live in a normal environment. It's plain murder is what it is. If you put me out of that house, you'll murder me. I'm not an ordinary person. Not anymore. I didn't ask to be like this. Society did it to me, she told the judge. Mr. Turmel's arguments against charging interest repudiated a number of times by the courts, including three times at the Supreme Court of Canada, didn't impress the judge. He quoted scripture at length in his submission saying interest charges are a violation of natural and divine law. The lady's been ripped off. If she'd gone into an illegal gaming house and found the game was stacked against her, she'd stop payment on the checks, said Mr. Turmel. What is happening to Mrs. Metcalf is viciously evil. The criminal code says it's illegal to charge a fee to gamble, so it should be illegal to charge interest on a loan since repayment of a loan is clearly a gamble, he said. Someone always gets knocked out. And can't. His interest in the case stems from his oath as an electrical engineer, he said. My whole purpose is to help someone who's being oppressed. The future of thousands of starving children was in the hands of the judge, he said. The number of people who could be saved if you act today is equal to the number of people who will die if you don't on that day. He and his brother Ray are fathers of the Christian Credit Party, which claims it is physically impossible to get more money back than was lent out in the first place. 
Judge Matheson rebuked Mrs. Metcalf for allowing Mr. Tremell to meddle in the case in the first place. I have a great deal of difficulty finding any logic, any clarity, or any sense in his arguments. I think personally that his knowledge of scripture is very limited indeed. I think he's twisted and distorted scriptural writ. While admitting the Bible is the greatest treasure we have in the world, the judge said it is dangerous to take isolated passages and argue law from them. My understanding of scripture and holy writ is quite different than Mr. Turmel. He was no more impressed with Mr. Turmel's high technology economics. Everything that I've heard from Mr. Turmel appears to be extremely simplistic. I think Mr. Turmel is doing a very real disservice to the public. He by misleading them, he said. He warned Mr. Tremell to never try to represent anybody in a court of law in Lanark County again. In his submissions, Mr. Howard said a solution may well have been found to Mrs. Metcalf's troubles if Mr. Tremell had stayed out of the case. Power of sale proceedings were started in August, and everybody tried to find a solution to the problem. But since Mr. Tremell's arrival on the scene on November the 10th, we've been involved in a legal morass. Mrs. Metcalf may not even understand or subscribe to Mr. Turmel's theories, he said. On previous court appearances, she said she would move out immediately if she could find a suitable place to live. Quite frankly, she's trying to put the matter off. Surely this is an abuse of a process. There is no legal justification for this. Judge Matheson said it's almost it's the most difficult foreclosure he's ever seen. I don't remember a foreclosure matter in my life that's run into this many snags. When the two parties appeared before him in November, the judge said he thought the issue was resolved. He was surprised to find it was still before the courts. At one point, Mrs. Metcalf accused him of not paying enough attention to the case when it was first brought before him because he was tied up with the Justin Clark mental competency case. Mr. Turmel called the judge an enforcer for white-collar loan shirking during yesterday's proceedings. <laughs> Interest is the greatest atrocity in the history of mankind, he said. Mr. Tr Howard just doesn't understand the case against interest rates, Mr. Turmel said. Mr. Howard has a low-tech education. You can't expect him to understand high-tech math, but he should understand grade 9 algebra. Mrs. Metcalf and Mr. Turmel are hoping for a favorable judgment from another court in Toronto in a hearing on Monday. She's lo still looking forward to look finding another house. So, after Mrs. Metcalf loses in court and is ordered evicted, Metcalf expects to be on the street. And then, on the second, 17th of February, 83, allergy-ridden woman wins reprieve and eviction from Chemical Free Home. By Farrell Crook, Toronto Star. A 51-year-old Smith Falls woman who says she's too ill with allergies to move from her specially adapted home has won a two-and-a-half-month reprieve from eviction. While breathing from an oxygen tank in Osgood Hall courtroom, Marjorie Metcalf told three divisional court judges she'd commit suicide if the bank forced her from her home. I have to stay in my home until May. I have a right to life. If I'm put in the street, I'll die. That's where Section 7 of the Charter of Rights, the right to life, comes in. Metcalf says she suffers from total allergy syndrome as a result of a reaction to a hay fever injection four years ago, and now she's allergic to chemicals. My system's adapted to my home and I can live in it, she told the three judges. She wasn't able to keep up the 364 a month mortgage payments on her present home, she told the star, and <clears throat> stopped paying them last April. The Bank of Montreal started eviction proceedings against her in October. The court, a section of the Ontario Supreme Court, ruled her appeal against eviction proceedings was completely without merit, and the Charter of Rights has no relevance to her case, even if she dies. But the chairman, Mr. Justice John Holland, said the judges were sympathetic to her condition and were taking the unusual step of staying the effect of their order until May to give her time to find a new home. Metcalf, who lives on a 367-month welfare, says she needs $3,000 for a down payment, but's only managed to raise 500 so far. She said Judge John Matheson, who ordered her eviction, had told her she could go to a hospital. I can't go to a hospital because it's full of chemicals, she told the divisional court judges. If I go to a hospital, well, that's certain death. So, allergy victim gains re three-week reprieve. So, 